Be advised, you are coming in weak and unreadable. Say again, Con Tower. This is Hacho. Do you read me over? Hacho, this is Con Tower. I read you Lima Charlie. Con Tower, Con Tower. Request permission to launch and commence the field op. Over. Stand by. Hacho, permission granted. Say again, permission granted. Hacho that. Launching podcast in three, two. You are now entering the field op. With your host, Pacho Correa, Chief Warrant Officer 3, United States Marine Corps, retired. Get some. All right. All right. Get some. What's going on, everybody? Another great week has gone by, and it's showtime once again. So we got an awesome show uh, coming up to you guys uh, today. But before we get started, you know how I like to start uh, my show. So hey, this show, we're, we're, it's all about uh, freedom of speech, as well as the right to bear arms, you know, first, first and second amendment, among all the other things that the great constitution of this awesome country has brought to us and given to us by our, you know, given right of being American. So if you like what you hear, stick around, make sure you like, subscribe, follow, uh, make sure you share the show and recommend it to other people because that's how, you know, we grow the show. And also that's how basically we pay the light bill. Uh, but if you don't like what you hear, that's okay too. You can go ahead and swipe left and move on to the next show. Maybe, you know, some non really good stuff on sitchradio.com or combat bed vision, you know, one of those shows, some might strike you fancy. Nonetheless, the show must go on. Today we have a really awesome show. We have uh, my son, my oldest, uh, Mr. Joseph Correa. Let's bring him into the fold. What's going on, Joseph? Nothing much. How about you? How you been, son? I've been great. Just uh, working and um, getting used to the summers of Arizona again. It was 114 today, so that's always fun. I, I know, I know what you mean, but that's okay. You know. And Pacho dropped, so he'll be clicking that link and rejoining us shortly. I guess I'll fill in. Uh, Joseph, what was it like growing up the son of a Marine? <laughs> it was, it was, it had its ups and downs, of course, um, to, to be expected. Um, got to be exposed to some great stuff and uh, got to really grow as an individual uh, in regards to, you know, self-sufficiency and such and, um, I mean, it's, it's a multifaceted answer. There's a lot of layers to, to the question. Um, especially with, you know, father being a career Marine. So instead of just like four or eight years and then afterwards he's home all the time. Um, it was just a constant, just father's home, father's not home, uh, so on and so forth. Watch I filled in, man. We were just getting to what was it like growing up the son of an active duty Marine. So I'll let you take over. Thanks, bud. I appreciate it. Sorry about that. Well, technology sometimes will, it's a double-edged sword. But so, yeah, what was it like, um, you know, growing up in that, in this, in, in that safety bubble that's, you know, we, we like to call the base. What, what was that like for you? So growing up on the base itself, um, it is a bubble and you've got, you grow up with some expectations of how other people would be, you know, other you know, kids my age. And then you go out into the real world and you're like, man, uh, not everybody is as respectable or as, you know, motivated or self-sufficient or such like that. So that did help. Uh, with the growth um, and being a dependent on base, you know, you really uh, grow up around a lot of people that just have great character. Um, really, you learn how to be, at least from my perspective, you learn how to be just a little bit more mature, a little bit sooner, uh, which has its pros and cons, of course. Um, but it definitely has helped me as I transitioned into my teenage and then adult years and such just that growth was 
already occurred, so I didn't have to play catch up once I actually became an adult on my own. If that makes sense. No, no. I mean, it does. It does. Uh, but I think, and not, again, I'm not saying it. I'm not saying this any of this because you know because of my kid, but just because of the as an individual and person that I know you, and I think that that was just that's always been being you too because I mean we can I mean shit we knew we knew some of your counterparts or the the kids of some of my fellow Marines uh, whether we can see here whether enlisted or or, or officer. I mean, these kids were fucking hellions. I mean, let's just call it for like what it is. So, oh yeah. So it's two ends of the spectrum, if you will. Right. You know, I mean, you know, it's just one of those things where, you know, we can't say, oh, well, civilian kids or well, that. I think I think it just go. It it goes. It can go both ways. But I mean, you know, the the. I mean, do you re remember some of the stories or some of the things that, you know, let's talk about the bad first. Let's get to the bad and then we'll we can talk about the good later on. But I mean, do you remember some of the stories or some of the kids that you used to hang out with that and some of the stuff that they used to do? Yeah. Um, yes, the there were uh, those that were significantly less. Um, they, they were little shitheads. Um, you know, you got kids that are just bored and doing kid stuff, right? But, um, just, you know, basic stuff like teeping houses and, um, there are kids in my neighborhood that just stole scooters for the sake of stealing scooters and their parents just like, eh, well, I guess we have 40 scooters now in our garage. And like, where did we get these? I don't know, but we got 40 scooters, right? Not, um, just like random stupid stuff like that. Um. A lot of fights, but that's, I don't know, not, not having been a civil, like living in the civilian neighborhood and such like that and growing up with those kinds of kids. Uh, that's just what I think of as kids doing is just stupid little stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, and we can talk about, I mean, I remember, um, you know this kid. I mean, shit. His name was Lucky. I think was was his name. <laughs> and I mean, I remember some of the stuff that did, I mean, him and some of his little friends used to do. And uh, I mean, Scott has been on the show before. I think it was Halloween, and these kids were playing. Um, you know, ringing doorbells, and then you know, did you know, running away. And Scott had uh, he had. I think he he was wearing a ghillie suit, and he was kind of like dressed up like one of those. Um, uh, you know, like a scarecrow or something on the chair. So every time you would go to, you would go to his house, he would know, ah, he would, you know, scare the living crap out of you. Everybody, you know, every trick or treater. But so these kids were going around the neighborhood. And um, I mean, I think it, they, they just hit his house and he was still dressed. I mean, and they ran away. He's running around the house, all of chasing him around the perimeter of his house, you know, trying to grab him with his kid, Gillies. And he finally ca caught this kid. And the kid was crying. Oh my God! Oh, you know, let me go. And I think the kid was even cussing him. They called the MPs, and it was just a huge, pretty huge, sure you know, just too. just shit show, you know. You know, yeah, just and that's 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 just some of the stuff that I mean. My friends and I did stupid <laughs> stuff like that too. Um, you know, it's, it's you get bored, you do stupid stuff. Um, Plenty of ding dong ditching. I remember when we lived in Lake O'Neill, they had this um, like this monthly like who's got the best lawn kind of thing, which was kind of weird because nobody mowed their own lawns because uh, everyone had you know the base provided lawn care. But okay, uh, so it was like who's got the best lawn? You get like this little sign on your on your lawn, um, and then every month we would just move it to somebody else's lawn um and like every day until this lady caught us and we just booked it and kept the sign and like you, you do stupid stuff like that so like it's that's part of growing up right yeah i think it was one another another chief warrant officer <laughs> um he was motor t or maybe i know for i don't remember but <clears throat> um 
his kid got in in trouble because again it, it's like almost all this shit used to happen in um what's the name of that neighborhood o'neill housing right there by the old where we used to live um I mean, this kid was wet as can be, and everything. He writes uh, Tupac for life, or <laughs> or something on on one of the the um, not the monkey bars, but the the little whatever that you, with the slide. I mean, he and then you know they called the MPs and this and and they got kicked out of housing because he was tagging basically Thug Life and Tupac for life, and it's like, dude, I mean, it's like you're growing up on base. I mean, you're not growing up, you know. You don't have to have street cred. I mean, <laughs> base housing for shit's sake, you know. So I mean, it just it just things like that. Uh, I think that you know, like just people get bored, and you know, it's it's not perfect. It, it, and I mean, people, kids are kids are gonna be kids. It do, it doesn't matter, um, you know, what the what the environment. But did you ever felt? And I asked I asked this to your sister as well. I mean. I mean, I know I used to give you the the marine haircuts. I mean, I, I'm 100 guilty of that, and I know you used to hate, you know, especially when the when the clippers would get hot and uh, just Jesus Christ. But I mean, did you did you ever feel compelled to like join the Marine Corps or that you were marined around? I mean, yes, sometimes you know punishment, you know, corporate punishment would happen to be push-ups and, and all that type of stuff but sun gods, sun gods huh? for 10 minutes straight just sun gods that was the <laughs> worst um no i i think i mean i think that type of punishment was uh i mean it was some mr miyagi shit where it's like <laughs> like all right we're gonna you want to act up we're gonna punish you but it's also gonna build character and make you stronger because you know well, you ground me. Cool. You grounded me and put me in my room with all of my stuff. What am I gonna do? Mess with my stuff. I'm gonna I'm gonna get creative. I'm a kid, but um, at least this way, you know, it helped me be a little bit more athletic. Um, and now, just, I mean, it, it it only I feel benefited me in that regard. Um, I can, of course can't speak for other people, but for myself, uh, that type of punishment was more of you know help building discipline in myself. Um, instead of just getting in trouble for the sake of getting in trouble. Um, and then I did, I know that I did aspire to one day be a Marine. There's actually a newspaper clipping um, from the uh, the Camp Pendleton uh, newspaper. They went around to uh, Mary Faye Pendleton. We're asking a bunch of kids, what do you want to be when you grow up? And in there, I was like, oh, I want to be a Marine. You know, I want to be awesome like my dad and his friends and such like that. So, of course, I did want to, I did want to join. Uh, I was unable to because I'm a medical disqual. Uh, tried a few times on that one, uh, but I, I did end up being able to assist in the way that I could, and was a contractor for what five years. Yeah, so. from, I mean, and you were—I think you were the youngest uh, staffed contractor. Yeah, I was like 18, 19. Yeah, I mean, as soon as you turn eighteen, yeah, I mean, you were you were automatically pretty much you started working there. I mean, and yeah, you did. I mean, you worked at the, um, you know for the base safety center uh, and for the traffic traffic section, uh, teaching motorcycle safety, and which which to me I thought was you know, and I did do a, um, an episode on motor on motorcycle riding. I think it's a pretty good segue. Uh, I mean, you, I mean, you. You were kind of a late bloomer in the motorcycle stuff, but I mean, you. But I mean, it was just like right away. I mean, when you picked up, you when you picked it up, I mean, you you, you went all the, all the way. I mean, I mean, you, you you've gotten to you know. Well, I mean, shoot, tell us, you know, what you was, uh, you know, your your growth path uh, as far as an instructor came and in California and you know where you stood and all that stuff. So it started off with me actually not liking motorcycles that much. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, did not like bikes. And then I took the BRC on Camp Pendleton, uh, the basic rider course to get my license because we just had this Honda Nighthawk 250 that uh, was sitting in the garage. And I was like, hey, can I have this? Because uh, it's a little bit cooler than my rusted out Suzuki Samurai. Um, hey. And, well, yeah, yeah. It was hey. rattle can a couple hey. times. Come right? on, man. In a the rust bucket was okay. <laughs> the rust bucket needed another quart of oil every two days. Um, 
And I was like, you know what? Why not? You know, it's it's cheaper on gas. It's it's cooler. I'm in high school. Why not? Right. Um, took the BRC. I took it with uh, John Samroska and Rich Stamp, both great riders. Um, now they're doing uh, Yamaha Champions Racing School, and uh, John Samroska runs the traffic safety department uh, down at NCS Yuma. Um, so two great riders, great mentors. Um, I nearly failed on the first time, uh, I took the class, um, but I passed and decided, you know what, this would be kind of cool. Let's do this one day. I started, uh, shadowing you as you went to El Centro. Um, I think at first it was punishment. You're like, Hey, come on. It's hot outside and you messed up in school. So let's throw some cones. Um, but that was really cool experience watching other people grow, you know, people coming in with no experience on motorcycles. And they're just taking a whim, like, you know what, let's let's try it out. Let's see if this is something I want to do. Or, hey, I just dropped 20K on a bike and I have no idea how to use it. Teach me. Like, that's dumb, but okay, we're going to do that. Um, (laughs) And just watching that growth, watching people uh, gain an appreciation for this, um, that really inspired me not to just become a rider coach, but also become a better rider. Um, And, of course, transfer on these skills. And then from then on, uh, when I turned 18, um, I shadowed for about six months to become a rider coach, help make it easier for me to go through the training. Um, in the state of California, the youngest you could become a rider coach was 18. And even at that time, uh, they had me, uh, they had to get some special recommendations. That way they're not just signing off some kid that had no idea what he was doing. Um, got certified at 18, was the youngest rider coach, uh, in California and much, many other states, as far as I knew, as far as the program knew. Um, and then from then on, I just wanted to grow. And then I became a um, total control instructor for levels one, two, and three. Um, and then everything for the MSF, except for like the three wheel stuff and circuit rider course. Um, and then uh, started doing quality assurance stuff. Uh, was on track to become a rider coach trainer. So to teach other rider coaches how to become rider coaches. Uh, ended up purchasing my own rider training school, did that for a few years. And now I just help out with the state program over here in Arizona as I work my corporate job as well. So I do that on the side, teaching when I want to, so that way it's not a job. Instead, I can really just enjoy what I'm doing. Yeah, no, I, I, I know you were a late, a late bloomer. Um, remember we used to have the ATC, the three wheel. Oh, I hate it. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, I screamed. I was crying. I was, I was yeah. like eight years old crying. Yeah. It was great. I but saw. yeah, but that thing, you know, I think you know we had a lot of older bikes. You know, I'm you know, like as you said, you have an eclectic taste. You need to stop buying these type of uh, eclectic motorcycles. But but also, I mean, you know, again, you started picking up, you know, re- uh, turning wrenches. Uh, I know because you know I used to build bikes and stuff in the garage and just take her. Uh, but it was a great way, come, you know, coming full circle because as you even got better, I mean, uh, I, you know, I got my racing license and stuff through Rich, uh, who invited me out a couple of times and I ended up getting my license and such. Um, but I thought, I thought it was really cool when we had that, you know, you already, you know, part of pretty much doing the, the whole state program thing in California and, yeah, you were part of the, you know, some of the QAs and all that stuff where you, you were doing the, the whole track, um, you're being a track monitor and stuff. And at one point in time, I mean, you, you zap right by me, you know, on your bike. And, you know, I, I even asked him like, Hey, were you towing with me or, and, and you're like, yeah, I'm like, why? And I just, and I just say, Hey, why didn't you just pass me? He goes, well, I just didn't want to, you know, I, I, pre- and I said, which was cool. I mean, I appreciate the, the respect. But I mean, that's like I said to you, uh, you know, the track, I'm like, you know, it's progression. I mean, I, I would expect you that, you know, you get better. And and at some point in time, I mean, you're going to have you're, you're going to pass me. And that's, you know, that's what I guess, you know, that, that's human life. I mean, you know, new school versus old school. Uh, you know, as I get older, I get more conscious and, and more cautious that, hey, you know, this man has five knee surgeries, one bum shoulder with a surgery and another one that he injured getting bucked off of a, a horse in Texas. You know, I mean, I have to, 
you know, we, you get a little bit more cautious is, is the bottom line. I mean, so mo, some more than others. I mean, hence why I still get injured to this day. Um, but, you know, it, you know, that's life. So I, th I thought it was pretty cool, you know, that that you've been, you know, that, you, you, you know, you're doing the bike thing and you're getting better at it. I mean, shit. To the point where you even started coaching me on how to be be a become a, be, a better instructor myself. I mean, you told me, hey, uh, because you were doing this, you know, I, I was doing it kind of. I I started out when I first retired doing it somewhat full time ish, but then I like you, I you know I, I went and got a corporate job doing some other, so it became more of a weekend thing. And you were doing this full time, and of course you're going to get better at being uh, you know standing on a podium and talking and stuff and you're like hey when you talk to student once you try these things um uh, and say it this way and i was like oh hey you know what that makes sense so i thought it was pretty cool i mean you know i didn't see i didn't get my feelings uh, you know you know hurt or whatever I, th I thought i was like oh hey you know so i just it made me want to strive to be like you now uh as an instructor you know so for that good sir i thank you and um but but you, but you know the cool thing about that job is that it kind of sets you up for success to, and by no means that I have you know I do safety and that was my thing. But and I don't think uh, I, I you know nobody. I mean you made your own choice, and you kind of. It was, but it was easy transition because you know I said hey you know what they're hiring here and you kind of jumped aboard and again you took the ball and you just started running with it you know. So that was in what 2018 I think. Yeah, so that was uh, that position started March twenty third of two thousand eighteen. Damn, to the date yep. and everything. Yeah, I moved here March twenty first, sight unseen, and then uh, started my job March twenty third, and didn't realize that I moved an hour away from where I worked. That was so, idea. so what is it you do now? Then I mean, yeah, you you, you had your own business. You had, uh, you know, you, you know, you. you we know we you teach motorcycle motorcycle safety. So, I, what's your nine to five gig then? So my uh, my nine to five is I am on paper um, the assistant vice president of loss control for a professional employer organization. Uh, that is just a bunch of fancy words that means that um, I work in workers' compensation and my job is to analyze trends in regards to industries and uh, types of injuries, location, so on and so forth, just trends, trend analysis, and then take that data and relay it to our field team and let them know, hey, uh, focus your efforts in this direction because we want to minimize the potential for employee injury. Uh, that's what it comes down to. It's it's a mix of humanitarian. We want We want people to go home safely to their families. Um, and of course, as well, business. Hey, we want to protect our assets in regards to you know the insurance premium we collect and then what we pay out. Um, so on a good day, I just look at numbers, and then on a not so great day, I deal with you know amputations or potential fatalities and such like that. Um, and that's for industries all across the board, be it from construction, warehousing, staffing, medical, uh, mining, uh, a bunch of stuff. So. And we help yeah, that company, company. yeah, that company's grown sure. quite a bit. I mean, that's after when I when when I got started my first company, that's where I where I went. And you, I mean, you and me we even worked together. Um, but we already had a really good working, unlike any other, I think, unlike any other father and son um, working relationships. Uh, and I'm not talking about like the people from American Chopper, like, hey, fix that goddamn, you know. I mean, you, we, you and I used to work together, and we, when we used to throw cones, you know, teaching motorcycle classes, we did not have to say one word to each other that entire class, and, but we were just like in sync, like it, just by looking at each other, you know, uh, you know, either I took the lead sometimes, or you were the, you know, you you were the, you know, first coach, I was second, and vice versa, and he just like, you know, look, you know, the nod, whatever. I mean, it was just boom. And I mean, we used to make it make it happen. So I think that that was a good segue. I mean, when we worked together, I mean, we were co-workers. You know, you didn't call me Poppy or whatever. You know, none of that. Stuff. I mean, it was just like, hey, Joe. And, you know, you come up by my first name. And I mean, but we made stuff happen. I mean, you were there at Central at the headquarters and I was out, out in the field at, in other places. I mean, but they was good. And that company has grown quite a bit. And they do a lot of stuff. 
I will say that Venture Employer Services, they, when I was there, they, I mean, they, they were very pro-military. They did a lot of free pro bono OSHA safety courses with um, Veterans Transition Support, Russell Levy, who's been on the show as well. So, and I know, I know Bill and everybody, you know, Carol and, you know, um, Alex, uh, all those folks over there, you know, it's a great team. They've done, they've done really good. And, and, you know, they love to hire military as, as well. So, you know, if anybody here is interested, Venture Employer Services, you go to their website, check them out. They're on LinkedIn and hit them up. You know, that's just a free, free ad uh, build. If you want to um, go ahead and sponsor the show, Alex, I'm all about it. <laughs> I'll, go, I'll go ahead and let the recruiting and marketing team know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, but I I think you know now. So now you're, I mean, you're, I mean, dude, you're you're 27 years old. I mean, and for a 27 year old, I mean, you're you're making really good money, uh, 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 you know, right there, you know, in, in Arizona. I mean, that's that, that's pretty freaking awesome. I mean, don't you know? So, what's your next goal? I mean, what what, what do you have your uh, your 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 target site as? Um, as you climb this, climb, I mean, you're climbing this corporate ladder pretty good. So my next goal is just to continue to climb the ladder. Um, I've owned my own business once and I've done that. I met that check in the box. Uh, I did that thing and it was cool. Maybe I'll do it again later on. But right now I just want to, it sounds super anti what a lot of people like to do, but I, I love just climbing that corporate ladder and just, uh, because it's it's something from my from my experience because of my age and such like that having joined this company at 23 being the youngest person by the the next youngest being 20 years older than me um it's me climbing that ladder is because i put my 3000 percent in and it's just the fruits of my labor and the recognition and such like that and being able to help better the departments and energy departments, uh, communication and such like that. And so that's pretty much it. My, my goal is to one day be, uh, my senior VP position. Um, that is, and that is going to be soon if it's by anything that, or if it's goes according to plan, it's going to be relatively soon. I mean, do, do you think that's, um, uh, and, and I asked the question and you could be as, you know, as dead on as a, I, I would, I would hope that you are, but I mean, do you think that the, your upbringing in the sense that, you know, growing up in the military and, and to some of the things and seeing different, not just me, because you, I mean, hell, you, you even got to, you even, I mean, shit, I don't know what we haven't talked about it, but you got to live in Japan with me, um, you know, at Mount Fuji uh, for, for almost a month. Uh, actually, for, yeah, for for over a month, and you left two days before the actual earthquake tsunami hit. I mean, so you've been exposed to a lot of different, you know, environments. Um, you know, how was that? Yeah, let's before we get to to the other piece, but how was that? You know, what was your experience from your from your point of view? Because it initially started as a punishment. Yeah, I'm going to bring his little ass. He's misbehaving at uh, you know in California with his mom. But then, you know, I, I was like, man, I think this guy, like a couple of days, I'm like, I think he likes this shit, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, how was that experience for you, uh, you know, going to Fuji and, and you know, me, you know, getting to hang out with the, with the, Marine, with the barracks Marines? So it was awesome um, because I, I learned a pretty good level of, you know, fun versus work and, you know, waking up at 4 a.m. to, to iron my camis and then proceed to PT and then scarf down food and then work. And then at the same time I was still in high school. So it was, all right, you're done, you know, working on uh, vehicles or doing miscellaneous, you know, cleanup. I hate, I hate the snow. Uh, I will never shovel snow again in my life because shoveling snow around those barracks is just sticks with me. Um, it's just oh, believe me, I, I did it when I when I became a warrant officer. I never seen snow, and I mean the little sh stuff that we got to see here and there in in California, you know, going up to the mountains. But I freaking hated shoveling snow 
at TBS at basic the basic school. It was freaking horrible. God damn, it lost its coolness right away. Yeah, day one. Oh look, it's snow. Day two, fuck the snow. This is I'm done with yeah, this. Never exactly. again. Move to Arizona. <laughs> Um, no, but it, it only, uh, again, that form of discipline only helped me mature and grow even more. So, um, I, it's, I, it's, a, it's an experience. I still, to this day, I value, um, walking away with the challenge coin that Colonel Gay gave oh me. Um, oh yeah. I still have this. I still have the little, little, um, uh, what's it called? He provided me um yeah the, the certificate and stuff oh yeah the, yeah uh, kind of like uh, yeah letter of, uh yeah, so it, of appreciation yeah yeah and it's 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 again starting off as punishments i think that was the an amazing punishment if you will because i did end up enjoying it i enjoyed the camaraderie um it's it's it just helped further my growth uh just as a person in general um and that's just an experience I'll always cherish just um, because of just how fun it was, how great being able to see the world was, a uh, different perspective. Um, it's It was just nothing but positives and shoveling snow, F the snow. Um, <laughs> but yeah. No, I think that, I, I, I you know, that experience, um, you know, and um, I forgot the staff owner's name at the motor pool, but he's like, hey, sir, your kid can actually turn wrenches. I'm like, yeah, I think, you know, I hope so. I mean, he's seen me do it quite a bit. He goes, he's actually pretty good. You know, I wish I could have a couple of more. I'm like, I'm like, Hey man, we can, I could keep him here two more months, but I forgot that you were supposed to go on a trip. And luckily, you know, thank God that you did leave because two days later to, I mean, to the hour, um, you know, that earthquake tsunami hit, you know, right there in Japan. And I even had two Marines that when it hit, they were stuck uh, for a week down at uh, Haneda Airport, and um, they had to make their way back through back roads. I don't know how this, these kids made it back. Is you know, uh, I mean, they had GPS. It's 2011, but the GPS system uh, on phones and stuff. I mean, I think it was like a, GPSs were like a added option on your phone plan. But you know. But that experience and those things, I think, you know, like you said, I think it did it did help assist you to the type of person that you that you are today. Um, not just um, because I, I mean, I, yeah, aside from the haircuts and and whatever, and you know, tying the ropes when when needed. Uh, I mean, I don't, I, you know, there were there was no, I don't think I, I marine you or your sister around like you know, like you see some of my you know counterparts are like, man, it's like oh hell no, you you know, but. It is what it is what it is, but no, that, that's awesome. And then congratulations on you. And I know this this was uh, you just got this recent um, promotion with uh, with this with venture and everything. So you know, I'm happy for you, and I'm proud of you too. I mean, you are my son Thank after you. all. <laughs> well, where can people find you if people don't have? Hey, Joseph, I wanna you know I'm interested in becoming a safety professional like you, or, hey, I'm just, um, I'm, I'm interested on, on learning more about motorcycling and, you know, private lessons and all that stuff. Where can people uh, go and reach out to you? So the easiest way would be, of course, LinkedIn. Uh, just look up Joseph Cordea and uh, you'll see this mug looking at you in my profile picture. Um, I get questions like that all the time. Uh, hey, just want to know a little bit more about, you know, getting to the safety field or, getting to the motorcycle safety field or just learning how to ride and such like that. So uh, LinkedIn is the easiest. Um, you could also, I mean, the only other social media that I have is Instagram. So if you want, you can use that too. It's just average Joe Moto. Um, same thing. I get direct messages there all the time. Feel free to message me. Um, more than happy to help because that's, that's what I do. I, I help people because um, I want people to be safe and either on a motorcycle out in the field you know doing whatever their their work is and such like that um, so feel free to reach out to me I'd be more than happy to help and do you do um do you do osha 10 hours and stuff like are you are you open to doing stuff like that on the weekend if people want to reach out and you know get some stuff done for their you know uh, companies and such 
Yeah, so I do OSHA 10 hours, I do OSHA 30 hours. Um, just reach out to me and we can see if we can make something happen. No guarantees, of course, because I do juggle a few different positions. I am a busy body and I do work very often. Um, but we can see if we can make something happen. También habla español. <laughs> Well, hey, can we bring you back some, you know, some other time uh, in the show just to, you know, bullshit and just chit chat and see where you're at? For sure. Of course. Okay. Well, thanks so much for your time, Joseph. I love you. Uh, I hope that everything is uh, is good. I haven't seen you in a little bit, so you need to bring your ass to Florida now that I have a, an actual real house. Yeah, but with my luck, I'm going to get there. And then like two days later, there's going to be a hurricane. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. You do bring the weather it. with you. I do. Um, but no, I'll definitely visit. Uh, it was great being here. Okay, so I love you. You be good, okay? Yes, sir. All right. Bye. Well, everybody, uh, that was uh, my oldest, Mr. Joseph Correa. Before we punch out, I just want to say that, hey, if you've been struggling with anything, you know, with depression, anxiety, or just ruminating, and as we used to call it in therapy, the ants are crawling all over you, just go ahead and, you know, you can reach out to me. You can reach out to other services like the VA, uh, Military One Source, uh, Suicide Hotline. Um, yeah, and you can even, again, let me be at least be that that last phone call, th those last text messages, let's work it out because everything has a solution. And bottom line is that nobody wants you gone. You matter. I matter. So let's let's talk about it and let's get you the help that you need. But other than that, a, another great show, another great week gone by. So and we'll bring Joseph on some other time. But with that being said, everybody, we're going to end right here. Adios, muchacho. Hurrah. Get some. I am out of here, baby. Pew.